Mayor Sanchez. Here. Deputy Mayor Kime. Here. Councilmember Jensen. Here. Councilmember Rodriguez. Here. Councilmember Weiss. Here. Welcome, my pleasure. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty ever living God, we know you and we praise you. We are the, you are the source of all the gifts and blessing. Today, we the people in Austin side is having our city council meeting. We ask you to be with us. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit to be in our hearts and in our mind. We ask you to guide us and to send us the gift of your wisdom so that all our public servants, leaders, constituents be enlightened, so that all of our department heads, persons of different city organizations be enlightened to achieve a good sense of direction. May our city of Oceanside will continue to progress, to prosper, to be always safe to live and be peaceful, even in our culturally diverse community. Through the efforts of our leaders, we can provide our community an environment that promotes growth in economy, supports quality education, fosters the cultural arts, and preserves its natural resources. May you create in us a teamwork in exerting all the efforts in providing the city an outstanding service in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Father A. Okay. Uh, please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have one proclamation this evening, and we could I please have Oceanside teacher, is it shy? Zai, I like a Zai, okay, Zai, Xanders. I can say Xanders, thank you. Yes. We have one of only five who, who have been picked, selected as Teacher of the Year for, um, it's an annual, right? 31 years. Yes. Yes. For the Cox Annual Teachers of the Year Awards. And Zai is one of... Yeah, one of 26,000 teachers in San Diego County. 26,000 teachers. And out of 26,000 teachers, 33 made it to the cutoff, countywide. And Zai was one of five, five that were selected. Can we please give her a great big hand? So Zai, Whereas San Diego County's 26,000 public school teachers are crucial um, to the educational advancement and well-being of our students, families, and communities, and whereas teachers dedicate many hours inside and outside of the classroom to teach, guide, and inspire their students to realize their educational and personal goals, and whereas the COVID-19 pandemic and distance learning place unique challenges upon our local educators who displayed creativity, innovation, and re resilience to ensure their students' continued learning, and whereas Cox Communications, a leading corporate supporter of local education, has partnered with the San Diego County Office of Education for 30, it was 31 years, to produce Cox Presents Salute to Teachers, a television special that highlights local teachers. And whereas on September 10th, 2021, Zai Sanders, a teacher at Cesar Cesar Chavez Middle School, in the Oceanside Unified School District was named one of five 2021-2022 San Diego County Teachers of the Year during a very special reception at Cox Presents 
Salute to teachers. And whereas Zai Sanders was chosen by an educational panel as a county teacher of the year from among 33 teachers nominated by their school districts for their commitment to students' teaching and lifelong learning. And whereas Zai Sanders will now represent San Diego County as a nominee for California Teacher of the Year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Esther C. Sanchez, on behalf of the city of Oceanside, do hereby recognize Zai Sanders for her tireless dedication to her students' academic success and, uh, and social and emotional well-being as a shining example of the best, the best and the brightest in our educational community, and as among San Diego County's top educators, reflecting proudly the best of our city of Oceanside. Thank you so much for your, for your dedication to our students, Zai. Thank you. I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to give you the, the mic. Unbeknownst to me that I would be given this honor, but I just thank the council and, well, Mayor Sanchez for giving me this opportunity to be honored, and it just feels very surreal, and the check-in of how teachers are doing. We're tired, but we do it because we love it, and I am so happy to represent the city of Oceanside, where I've been living since 1989 and going to the Oceanside Unified School District and being a proud graduate from our district. Thank you, Zai. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next, do we have um, our folks from, uh, from Caltrans here? It doesn't look like they're here. So um, let's go on. Hopefully they'll appear in the next few minutes. I'm going to go ahead. I see a, a, a turkey in, in the chambers. Here we come. Good evening, Mayor Sanchez. I'm the race director of the Oceanside Hi, I'm Oceanside resident and Channel 10 News meteorologist Angelica Campos. I have been part of the Oceanside Turkey Trot for the last 60 years. It is presented by Tri-City Medical Center and it's right along the beach. It is gorgeous. Please come move your feet before you eat on Thanksgiving morning and run America's most beautiful turkey trot. Proceeds benefit the Move Your Feet Foundation and many local nonprofit uh, organizations. Registered at OceansideTurkeyTrot.com. So we're so blessed to have uh, Mayor I can tell you that this is the most exciting year we have ever had. People are so happy to have the turkey trot coming back to Oceanside. Probably every day I get an email that says, thank you so much. We're looking forward to it. And it's a very special time. And it's because of you guys that we're able to have the event again. So this is our slides. And again, nothing stops the trot. And we are so happy to be here. And thank everyone who has supported it for all of these years. Um, the event happens on Thanksgiving morning in downtown Oceanside, and the proceeds benefit the schools and nonprofits that serve Oceanside residents. I typically write 90 checks after the turkey trot, and it's a lot of fun sending them out. Uh, we want to, of course, uh, thank our sponsors, Tri-City Medical Center, My Brighter Side, the City of Oceanside, Front Wave Credit Union, Dick Sports, uh, Visit Oceanside, The Chamber, Fraser Farms, Viasat, Waste Management, Go Macro, and Nutso, for those of you that like uh, peanut butter. <laughs> um, this year, we have moved the expo back down to the Junior Sale Beach Community Center. So we will be there on Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday late morning. And then the day of the event, the expo will be held in the amphitheater area. We have a five mile, a 5K, and three kids runs. Uh, the race will start. Well, let's go to this. We do expect about 8,000 runners and walkers this year. We're tracking at that rate. We have North County's favorite costume contest. We give out $100 gift certificates to the top three costumes. 
And we have a teams competition. I already have 75 teams signed up this year. We have almost 1,500 people signed up for the trot already. And hopefully the city will get a team together. Um, one of the things we're most proud of is the really great positive race coverage that we get uh, when it's not pouring rain. So we're hoping that we're going to have a beautiful, sunny Thanksgiving day. Uh, for those of you who are out there who don't know much about the trot, this is a map of the course. It starts at the Civic Center, runs down to Wisconsin, back to Pierview, down to Wisconsin again, and then finishes right at Betty's Lot. A very important announcement is that we have so much more parking than we have ever had for this event as a result of the new parking structures and the new lots that have opened. Uh, Myers is open. And so I want people to take a look at this map. It's on our website and plan their day. And of course, uh, carpool with your friends and family. Uh, if you don't uh, park in our lots that are closest to the start and finish line, we have a fabulous bus shuttle that goes from Miracosta and the Live Well Center on Mission right to Dittmar, right by the Parks and Rec office. We, of course, have the best medals, finisher photos, and participant uh, shirts. And 5% of your ent entry fee can be automatically designated to a school or charity that serves Oceanside residents. We hope to raise as much as $420,000 after the last 15 years. It's growing. It's coming along. We want you to come and move your feet before you eat. What's the foundation? Our goal is to get you moving on Thanksgiving Day and every day. Uh, we have ambassadors that go out and run with the students. And we do motivational presentations to the school, the students. As you all know, most of you probably walked or rode your bike to school. And because they don't do that anymore, one of the reasons, the obesity rate's at about 34% right now, which is devastating. So calendar the event and go to osideturkeytrot.com and register today. Uh, it's a great event. We have live entertainment on the course. It's just a ton of fun. You'll see all the kids running the 5K. And thank you so much for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. I still don't see our presenters. Uh, they did ask for this time about a month ago and recently uh, confirmed last week. OK, so next are um, the consent calendar items, items 3 through 10. Any requests to pull? We have no public to sign up for the consent calendar. OK, from the dais. Number eight oh, number eight, I believe, got pulled by staff. By staff. Oh, by staff. Removed, removed by staff. Yeah. Removed by staff. Yeah. OK, uh, there's a motion by, was it Council Member, Council oh, Member Weiss. Weiss, second by Council Council Member Council, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, uh, Deputy Kime, Mayor um, for 3 through 10 minus 8. Um, please vote. Motion approved, 5 0. Thank you. On to item number 11, um, which is uh, our first uh, of two general items. Um, and this is approval of the re renaming of the following parks and facilities Alex Road Skate Park, El Corazon Aquatic Center, Martin Luther King Skate Park, which has been pulled uh, by the applicant. So uh, that is not going to be discussed this evening. Um, and Rancho de Oro Park based upon submitted applications in accordance with council policy 100-55. Um, we're gonna begin with a report by Mark Olson, Parks and Recreation Division Manager. Mr. Olson. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of the City Council, staff, and guests. As mentioned, my name is Mark Olson from the Parks and Recreation Division. I'm here this evening to present applications for renaming parks and facilities in accordance with council policy 100-55. Uh, the synopsis is staff and the Parks and Recreation Commission recommend the City Council approve the renaming of the following parks and facilities, namely Alex Road Skate Park, El Corazon Aquatic Center, and Rancho Del Oro Park based upon submitted applications in accordance with the Council policy. As mentioned on October 19th, which was yesterday, the application to rename Martin Luther King Jr. Skate Park was withdrawn by the application and will not be recommended to see. Background on this item, uh, this policy was adopted in 2003. Staff presented the policy before the council on April 21st, 2021, and the council recommended designating the facilities 
uh, for renaming to include Alex Road Skate Park and El Corazon Aquatic Center. Uh, we received direction to accept the applications for those two facilities in addition to Martin Luther King Skate Park or Martin Luther King Jr. Skate Park and applications for a facility to be named after the former mayor, Jim Wood. Uh, following that direction, applications were immediately made available, both in printed and electronic formats. We did receive four applications for the three different facilities we're discussing this evening. Staff presented the applications to the, and recommendations to the Parks and Recreation Commission at a special meeting on September 29th, 2021. Uh, an analysis there, Alex Road Skate Park, uh, the requested name is Prince Memorial Skate Park, submitted by Josh Carson Sr. The criteria within that application was C from the policy, which is posthumously for service. The El Corazon Aquatic Center, the requested name, is the William A. Wagner Aquatic Center, uh, submitted by Lori Wagner Gould and Jennifer Wagner. Again, there were two applications for this facility. Uh, the criteria, outstanding service over, over a period of years. And Rancho Del Oro Park, uh, to be named Jim Wood Park at Rancho Del Oro, Rancho Del Oro uh, submitted by Robert Mikulay for outstanding service over a period of years. Uh, there is a bit of a fiscal impact. Should a facility be approved for naming, a new monument sign or frontage signage would be uh, required at a total of about $8,000 per facility. On September 29th, 2021, as mentioned before, the Parks and Recreation Commission made the following recommendations. To rename Alex Road Skate Park to Prince Memorial Skate Park by a vote of five to one with two members abstaining. The El Corazon Aquatic Center to be renamed William A. Wagner Aquatic Center by a unanimous vote of eight to zero. To rename Rancho Del Oro Park to Jim Wood Park at Rancho Del Oro by a vote of seven to one. And again, Martin Luther King Jr. Skate Park uh, that application was withdrawn, but it did receive a vote of eight to zero. So again, it's the recommendation of staff and the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, that the City Council approve the renaming of the following skate park, following parks and facilities to include Alex Road Skate Park, the El Corazon Aquatic Center, and Rancho Del Oro Park based upon the submitted applications in accordance with City Council Policy 100-55. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, I'm not sure if we have public comment. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Do we have members of the public wishing to speak? We have one speaker on this item, Joshua Carson. Thank you. And Mr. Mr. Carson, if you're here, um, please feel free to come up to any either podium. We have and another, then somebody another just well. entered in late, so we'll, we'll accept that person. Yeah. Uh, just, just to let you know, we are on item number 11, which is approval of renaming um, certain parks. Um, so if you're wishing to speak, you need to fill that out and turn it in as quickly as possible. I think I've already shut it down, but we'll, we'll accept, we'll accept her. Okay. Yeah. Thank All you. Right, Mr. Carson, whenever yeah. you're ready, you have three minutes. Well, I appreciate you guys for allowing this even to be here. I've been working like nine years to try to get this done just for my fallen friend, uh, Michael Prince and, um, just what a, a special place it is there in the community that we have there that that kind of came out of nowhere. It just it organically happened. Nothing was, you know, like meant to be like that. It just, everybody just became like a family there and it's a tight knit community. I know a lot of people on the bike trail, you know, didn't really like it at first, but now we have people coming in, you know, that live in those, the C9 neighborhood right there, their kids skate there. So there's a lot of good things going on right there, but I just wanted to more talk about Prince this time, cause last time I was kind of nervous and I didn't really know what to say it is intimidating standing up in front of a bunch of educated people. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to tell you guys that Michael was, uh, me and him talked about it multiple times, like when the park was being built, we looked at it together, the skate park, and he really wanted to, um, to, to skate it. He was looking forward to it. And uh, the fact that it was happening right there, right in the Mid Valley, we never thought it would be, everyone said it was going to be like a shopping center or something, or something you know, like that. And we're like, no one even shops anymore at shopping centers, you know, Amazon's around. Even back then, like Amazon was around. So um, my wife hated shopping, so I was just praying that would be a skate park. And sure enough, when we saw the break ground, it was amazing, you know, to see like a skate park going in right there in, the, in that neighborhood just because it needs it. There's a lot of kids that have no, nothing to do good over there, you know. There's just nothing but bad stuff to get into. And uh, Prince was just talking about how, how bad he wanted to skate it. And then it was three, I think, I believe it was three months to the day he died before the skate park opened. And that, 
that was rough on me. That hurt a lot. And then it, it also hurt my friend RJ, who actually committed suicide a few years later. And uh, he used to go to the events that we'd throw there, you know, like the skate contests. And he made me promise him, though, before he did commit suicide, I didn't know he was going to do it, but, um, that I would keep it going and I would never stop, like, you know, keeping the little kids hyped and giving them something to look forward to. And uh, a lot of them come from bad, you know, bad background, bad homes. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's just like, I don't know, I can't explain it, man. It's magic, but you can't go anywhere else in the country with a skateboard in your hand. You can go with a skateboard in your hand. If you get off the plane and you don't know their language, you're accepted and they want to take you to meet their people. You know, like the skateboard is it's something weird, man. It's always done something. I've always went back to it, no matter how sidetracked I got. I went back to the skateboard and I know Prince was um, bummed he couldn't ride it, but I guarantee you his, his spirit is there because it's, it's a peaceful place. It's mellow. Everybody gets along. We accept everybody unless you're doing something ridiculous, ludicrous or something. But yeah, we accept everybody. We just want the public to come and see for themselves instead of judging from the outside, you know. Because a lot of people say that stuff goes on there that shouldn't go, whatever. If it's not going on when I'm there, I promise. And um, I just appreciate you guys letting me have this. Uh, like, even to get it in front of you guys is a huge deal. Since we've been having petitions signed and everything since 2013 when it opened. So I appreciate you guys, and I hope that this happens because it's been a long fight, dude. Thank you. And a water you. fountain next would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Guys. Our next public comments from Michaela Ramirez. Hi, thank you. Um, sorry, I was late. And I it's appreciate okay. everyone here listening to the renaming of Prince Park. Um, ever since I the, they broke ground, I actually was working with a teacher named Isabel Freed. And she's a teacher in Oceanside at El Camino High School. Um, I learned about Prince and everything he did for the kids in mentoring those kids that would come to the park before the park was built. And that's what also inspired her to continue with the skate club. Everyone I speak to that has um, spoken about Prince um, has always had very positive things to talk about, especially understanding and, and the knowing his background and where he came from. The mentorship that he was able to give the youth that was skating there was very, very dire, especially coming from that area. Um, as for Prince Park and talking about how special that place is, it has such a great magnitude of diversity. Not only do the kids from District 1 in that area go and skate Prince Park, um, many people from around the world come knowing it as Prince Park, not Alex Road. It is such a unique area where people are safe, where in fact, we wanna thank you for cleaning the bathrooms as well. It's actually made it, made it even a cleansier place for the kids. That was like a huge thing and uplifting for them because a lot of them don't have anything. We do events for them, like last year during COVID, we did a, a Thanksgiving kind of called Prince Giving, where the whole community came together and gave away 300 skateboards to kids in need. Then we followed it up with Prince Miss. And with Prince Miss, that was even more beautiful because we discovered about 80% of the kids that were going there were in foster care or in homeless. Um, you know, what they constitute homeless in an educated um, sense. And they were able, the whole community came together again to make sure every kid got a Christmas present. These are things that happen because it's named Prince Park in the community. And so it'd be really, really amazing to get the support of the city council members, as well as you, Esther Sanchez, the mayor, um, uh, to just renaming the skate park and, and bringing together that community and that unity and celebration of life in that way. There's so many people that suffer right now. Why not make it a glorious celebration? And especially when it comes to community members that really support Prince and what he's been able to do for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ramirez. Thank you. Um, that concludes the public comment. Thank you. Um, and actually has already been known as um, Prince Park, so this is actually uh, just to make it formal, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to the dais, Councilmember Rodriguez. 
couple questions for staff. Um, if I'm, first, I want like to make a motion to approve this item. Um, I'll put that out there first. But I also would like to know, uh, once this item is approved, I'm assuming it's going to be approved today, what is the timelines for the plaques? And um, I'm sure the community would love to have some sort of uh, plaque recognition ceremony of, of sorts that we can invite the community out to. Um, what, what, what timelines are we looking at for, for that? Just rough estimates. Councilmember Rodriguez, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, it would probably be two to three months before we could get the facility signs designed and, and then installed. And then to your point, we would most likely do some sort of naming celebration, invite the community and have some sort of small gathering to formally recognize the, the motion uh, should it pass this evening uh, in, in a practical sense. But yeah, I, I think that would, I think the community there. would really appreciate having something like that. Uh, and then, um, not to put you on the spot, uh, Ms. Lorson, on the improvements to Prince Park, the bathroom facilities, the drinking fountain, do you have any idea on timing with that and, and wh where that stands for the community? Councilmember Rodriguez, Mayor and Council Members, Deanna Lorson, City Manager. Um, so Council did approve ordering the restroom facility at the meeting about a month ago. There's, uh, I think it's an eight month lead time okay. for them to manufacture that facility. Okay. So we are working on all the other design work, so it'll be ready to hook it up when we get it. But unfortunately, it's a, a slow process, and I think it's even slower with the current supply chain, yeah. chain issues that we are experiencing. So roughly like second half of 2022, roughly? Uh, yeah, hopefully by next summer, but I don't okay. have a precise timeline. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, this is, a, this is exciting. Um, we're honoring some amazing individuals uh, that will be honored in perpetuity. So I'm, I'm really ex excited for that. I know um, not being heavily involved in the the skate, my sons and my daughter, they love to skate, but you know, growing up, I remember getting a uh, Bart Simpson skateboard one Christmas and I was so excited and in my apartment complex, there's these stairs and I slipped and it went down the stairs and a car ran over it. And that was the end of my, my skating career. <laughs> but my sons love it. We go to Prince Park and, and we go to Melba Bishop and um, it's a whole, huge community that I'm just beginning to dive into and, and I really appreciate everything um, Ms. Ramirez and Mr. Carson you guys do for those kids it you know it brings tears to my eyes um, that's one of the reasons I ran for office was to be able to learn from individuals and leaders like you and and in this position of limited power to bring forth you know your vision and dreams for these kids and so I appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you. Um, I'm going to second the motion. Deputy Mayor Kime. I'm just going to thank everyone for coming. It's great to see the Wagners uh, here taking the time out, and I was going to second. Okay. And uh, Council Member Jensen. I was going to second as well, but I, I think that we've had overwhelming community support for the renaming of these parks, and it's really exciting. Skateboarding was a huge part of my childhood, and that Prince Park does have a magic about it that is very apparent and it's so important to the community. So this is really an exciting day. Thank you. Thank you, and, and I wanna say that we've uh, received dozens of, of emails in support of this item, even though we only had two people speak today. I, I attended the um, Parks and Rec Commission meeting where this was presented, and, and it was you know almost a full house. So uh, obviously, uh, with, with, with uh, the approvals, um, Wagners were in the house, uh, you know, the uh, Jim, um, Mayor Jim Wood um, had support. I mean, we all had, there was all, all kinds of support and it was really actually very exciting, very positive moments. Um, so um, indeed it is um, really great to be able to honor all these people that we're honoring today. Uh, no further comments, uh, a request to speak, please vote. Motion approved, 5-0. Thank you, next item, general item is item number 12, uh, award of a contract to Canyon Spring Enterprises DBA RSH Construction Services of Hemet in the amount of $7,086,928 um, for the construction of the repair project for the Henny Hills Reservoir 
uh, located at 2 Barnard Drive, and John Paul Steiger Reservoir, located at 398 Rancho Del Oro Drive. Approval of a professional services agreement with Hotch Consulting of Oceanside in the amount of $667,934 for the construction, management, and inspection services. Uh, approval of Amendment 1 to the Professional Services Agreement with Dudek and Associates of Encinitas in the amount of $267,980 for a total contract amount of $1.022 million for engineering support during construction. Authorization for the city en engineer to approve change orders up to $708,694 and authorization for the city manager to execute the agreements and amendment upon receipt of all supporting documents. That's the long title. Sounds like a lot of activity going on here. Uh, we begin with a report by Lindsay Alehi, Principal Water um, Engineer. Lindsay. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council. Lindsay Alehi with the Water Utilities Department. Here tonight to discuss the Honey Hills and J.P. Steiger Reservoir Repair Contract Award. Um, as the mayor described, there are four items, large items here tonight, um, an award of contract uh, to a firm doing business as RSH Construction for just over $7 million, approving of a professional service agreement with Hope Consulting for construction management services for $667,934, approval of Amendment 1 to DUDEC um, for uh, engineering during construction services for $267,980 and authorizing the city engineer to approve change orders up to 10% of the original contract value. A little background on our reservoir program. Um, we completed a uh, structural evaluation of all the reservoirs in the city in October of 2012. Uh, a couple years later, in January of 2014, we executed an agreement with HDR um, to do begin the initial designs of the first few reservoirs um, to do seismic and structural upgrades. And in January of 2016, we completed the first two uh, reservoirs. One was Guahomey 1, and the other was the Fire Mountain Reservoir. We completed those upgrades. In April of that year, we executed an agreement with Dudek Consulting to do the design of the remaining reservoirs in phases. So in September of 2019, we completed the upgrades of our Moro 1 and 2 reservoirs up in Moro Hills. And in October of 2020, we completed the design package for this Honey Hills and J.P. Steiger reservoirs. A little background on those reservoirs specifically, Honey Hills was constructed in on 1960, and J.P. Steiger Reservoir was constructed in 1975. Both reservoirs are a three million gallon uh, reservoir and they're both constructed using pre-stressed concrete. Um, the Honey Hills Reservoir is located within Mira Costa College at um, 2 Bernard Drive and the J.P. Steiger, Steiger Reservoir is located across from El Camino High School at uh, 398 Rancho Del Oro Drive. The project was publicly advertised and we received three bids um, and were opened publicly with, on August 5th of 2021. The engineer's estimate was just under 7 million at 6.95 million, with Canyon Springs doing business as RSH coming in at 7,086,928, which is about just under 2% over the engineer's estimate. Um, and with the current construction um, uh, program or I guess status, and material shortages um, is within reason. In parallel, we also issued a request for proposals for construction management services. And we, on August 6th of 2021, we only received one proposal from Hope Consulting. Um, we staff did evaluate their proposal and deemed Hope qualified um, and checked all of refer all their references and their entire proposal was in accordance with our city standards. Additionally, we're, going, we're recommending a, uh, a amendment to DUDEC, um, who is the design engineer, to keep them on during construction. Um, and what this entails is um, scope that wasn't included in their original contract um, to review construction submittals, respond to RFIs, site visits, and inspections, which happen a lot during these rehab projects, um, and any potential design changes. So if we find that there's an area that needs additional uh, work or um, uh, pipe reconfigurations, those types of things that uh, DUDEC would be on board for that. 
There's currently a, an available balance of about $5.15 million in the account and with a planned future appropriation through the budget process of just under um, or just over six, $3.6 .6 million. With the total estimated construction cost of the four items before you tonight totaling $8,731,000, um, there would be approximately $74,000 and change remaining in the project account. Um, the funding source for this project comes from our fixed asset replacement um, for, from the water fund and comes from our water sales and water meter fees. So with that, staff is recommending that council award a contract to Canyon Springs in an amount not to exceed $7,086,928, approve the professional service agreement with Coke Consulting for $667,934, Approve Amendment 1 to the Professional Service Agreement with DUDEC for $267,980 and authorize the city engineer to approve change orders up to 10% of the original contract value. And I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, are there any requests to speak from the public? Uh, there is no public on this item. Thank you. Back to the council. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kime. Um, who approval staff's recommendation. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. No other requests to speak. Please vote. Motion approved, 5-0. Thank you very much. Wanted to go back to, um, for the record to item number two, which was closed session report by city attorney. We did not have a closed session today, so um, that's probably why I skipped over that. <laughs> um, we uh, do have some requests to speak that are um, number 14, advanced um, requests and uh, we I, I don't see Miss um, uh, Kathy Nichol so we'll go to uh, Miss Erin Gilligan Morin and she has written that she, that she wishes to speak on the South Morrow Hills vision plan Uh, can you? Oh, crooked. Yeah, uh, crooked again. Sorry. Our, our assistant city clerk will help you. You're going to get some assistance here. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, perfect. There we go. That's the way. Well, I just want to bring you guys up to date on on what's going on in South Morrill Hills. This fire happened in uh, September, and that was last year. And the issue is, is that, that we want to continue our two and a half acre lot. And the, the issue is why? It's because I was, I was a witness to the smoke coming around and stuff, and it really did startle startle our house and we thought we weren't going to be on fire and stuff and the one thing i did is i i was one of the people that called 911 that day and i said oh my gosh where what's going on and i look out and i go there's a fire in sophomore hills and it took about 45 minutes before help even arrived and it, and I saw the flashing lights and everything coming up the road. The one thing that was, that was really good is when I talked to one of my neighbors and they said, oh, it's, it's fully engulfed, but the one thing that we don't want is cluster housing. And this is what got my attention on the cluster housing. If that fire spread or the embers jumped, we would have had a problem and a bigger problem. And I think that the two and a half acres does work because the owner of that property can go down, open up that gate, let in the fire crew, and actually have that out. And, it, and trust me, 
what fire said and what the police said. It was fully engulfed. The wind was a challenge. And it is very windy out and back in there. And if we wanted to do any kind of upgrades or any, any road improvements, it would take a massive study. And plus, we would have to go, we wouldn't be able to go out a Sleeping Indian. We would have to go out via Bonzel, via Bonzel via 70, 76. And, and vice versa. If there was a fire out in Bonzel area, they would have to come through North River Road I mean, not North River Road, I mean, Sleeping Indian out to, out that way. This is why it's so crucial that we slow this down. We keep the two and a half acres because number one, you got, you got access to that through that driveway. You got the fire contained there. You don't have to work around front of these houses because this is not like any other community. This is open space. And we can work on getting agritourism in there and having that two and a half acres zone. That's what really got my attention when we had that fire. And we're lucky that it didn't jump onto another neighbor's. It, it charred maybe somebody's avocado grove for just a little bit. But we were very lucky that we're, we're still growing and, and we became a buffer. I'm, I just want to share that. And I think that safety comes first when we're doing this general update plan. I think that we really got to slow things down and really think about this. And if we're doing workshops and things, I hope we, I hope we can come together and get into, into an agreement about it. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to go to communications from the public regarding items not on this agenda. Item number 15, do we have requests to speak? We have four requests to speak on items okay, off the agenda. let's go ahead and get started on that. Our first speaker is Dan Restifo, to be followed by Thomas Watermeyer, to be followed by Shelley Parker. And as I call your name down, please make your way down to the podium. And there's some empty seats in the front. Um, hang on a second, sorry. Um, oh, there. Hang on a second, I wanted to read something I wrote earlier for uh, you uh, concerning the uh, city of Oceanside homeless uh, situation. Um, I've been a, a landlord in Oceanside for uh, three plus decades, 32 years, and um, uh, our family bought a, a property um, it was like 32 years ago, and my father, he was 94, he passed away two years ago, but he was always uh, trying to help the uh, um, low-income homeless people, Section 8, and um, so on the property, um, Years ago, it's six units, and there was two garages and two carports. Well, he built two additional units in the carport and the garage, and um, this was maybe, I don't know, over eight or 10 years ago, and renting them to low-income people. So over 50% of the actual units also are uh, low-income. Well, recently, it's come to our attention uh, that um, uh, they were unpermitted. And so the city is sending us letters now that um, it needs to get permitted all of a sudden. and. Um, so we need to go through whatever the proper city codes uh, uh, are to do that. But my, I have a proposition for the city council that um, I was thinking about this for longtime landlords. When a situation like this comes up, and I know they come up a lot, I saw on the city code um, website, there was like 100 cases of garages that were converted in 2015. So each year there's 100, 130 new places that um, out of those, maybe they're unpermitted, maybe they have certain things wrong with them. But what if the city right now, while we're having a housing crisis, more homeless than ever, um, when the city codes got a hold of those, instead of telling the landlords, well, you need to convert this, you need to spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 and get it up to codes so you can continue renting it at whatever rent you're getting, um, you know, legally, um, what if they turned it over to uh, Section 8 department 
and said, okay, you can rent this to low-income people. We have a lot of them right now. And, um, and if it passes their standards, which are a little less stringent, um, they can um, rent to them. Let's say they can rent to them for like three years, low-income housing. It helps the people come off of the streets. It helps the landlord to provide low-income housing. And maybe they even throw in something like uh, tell the landlord, landlord uh, it, according to, to in, in order to make this happen, um, give us 30% of your um, ap apartment, your complex, just for smaller units, maybe 10 or less units. Like I have six. So let's say they say, you can build one more ADU, which you're allowed. Let's say they say, well, okay, we'll allow the other one that wouldn't usually be permitted as long as you're renting 30% to uh, low-income households. And if there's all these um, landlords that have these houses, and then the city also would t collect taxes on that as a stipulation maybe. I'm just saying I think that would maybe help the housing situation, help the landlords, and, um, and help the problem situation we're in. Thank you, sir. I want to say we cannot discuss this because it's an item not on the agenda, uh, but um, staff has been directed to look at um, coming up with a program um, to address some of the conversions and see how they can be made legal. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Borrego is, is in the back, and if you could speak to him, oh, okay. um, he just waved to you, okay, um, yeah. so that uh, you know you can get up to date to what okay. uh, what they're you know what what they're looking to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank I just you so I'd much. Bring that up because I thought being a landlord this long, it makes sense. It would help landlords. It would help tenants. It would help. Uh, right. We we only have one standard. You know, yes. we, oh, there's yes. not there are not lower standards. But oh yes, certainly this is something that the city council is yes. is is interested in, in looking into. Thank you, um, sir. Can can you help him with a mic? Mike. Uh, hello. Yes. Oh, there you go. Am Perfect. I on the mic? Yes. Can hear you. Yes. And I can now see you. About one year ago in July, I had a terrible stroke and I was renting a place from the gentleman that was just here. And after that, I was not able to sustain my rent because of, I couldn't afford the, the rent there. And I went through the housing department of Oceanside you know, and applied for a, uh, they did um, give a Section 8 voucher for, and I've had churches, people, everybody that I can think of, everything I can think of to try to come up with a rental unit for me using that voucher. And, you know, the uh, ten the landlords, you know, refuted me by uh, saying that I didn't have a good credit rating, even though the people that were going to pay the rent were the Section 8 federal government HUD housing. And I'm trying to find a solution to get through this. I don't know what else to do. My friend that I rented from before, Dan, um, He's got a unit for me to rent, and now, after all this time, I'm mean, within 10 days of losing the voucher, and they say, it won't be available for me again within 10 or 12 years. I don't have any solution. I don't know what else to do. Um, he's had a unit that he's rented out for the last 30 years, and I don't know why in the world that it's not available to me. About it right now. Thank you, Mr. Watermeyer. And uh, you are re asking a question about housing. Um, we do have Mr. Uh, Michael Gossman in the back, who is um, who oversees. I think he works with the housing department, so perhaps he can answer some of your questions. Sure. Thank you. Sure. He's in the back, and if you could, yeah, sure. yes, please. Thank you. Our next public comment is from Shelley Parker to be followed by Sandy Beal. Good evening, Honorable Good evening, Mayor, City Council, City Staff. I'm Shelley Parker and I speak for myself as a homeowner in Rancho San Luis Rey. We are still waiting for an actual resolution on our permissive rent increase. Star failed to pass on 6 21 
An edict was issued on 817, but not distributed. Two homeowners were emailed on 916 when the edict was signed by Ms. Hines and a letter, an actual letter, which we were promised to go, that was to go out to everybody, was distributed on 10-1. All of this is too late each month to pay rent, and there is not a solution on the edict. It states what has happened. To date, Star Management does not agree with this, and they expect to have the rent increase paid from July 1. So homeowners have been abandoned by the city, walked on by star management. The one responsibility that Ms. Hines said the city had was to oversee this inspection. But to date, we feel this has been a failure. In the city's effort to avoid court, it has allowed a business with a permit to operate in Oceanside to bully the city, as well as the residents in Rancho San Luis Rey. Star management is the gorilla in the room. Councilman Rodriguez, who represents our park, stated that he would put his efforts to get to the bottom of this issue weeks ago. Nothing except apologies from his staff, as he is apparently too busy to get to the bottom of the problem and protect the voters that has elected him to this position. It's very apparent that the city does not know what to do with a park that does not pass. The issue will not go away because inspections again begin again in February. Star management has had a year, has been given a year to fix our isolation valves. The clock is ticking. To date, money has been spent to paint the fire hydrants red. Nothing to fix the valves, the isolation valves, and that is the safety issue. Mobile home park living is affordable housing choice for families as well as seniors. We are veterans, teachers, healthcare professionals, business owners, state employees, and bank managers. There's $100 million worth of our homeowner investment dollars in that park. And I look forward to the day when I send an email to the powers that be in this city and I actually get the professional courtesy of an answer. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Our next public comments from Sandy Beal. Hello, I'm also speaking about Rancho San Luis Rey Mobile Home Park and I was gonna say almost everything that Shelley said so I don't think I'll repeat it. Um, one of the things, though, is the fact that we did, uh, the notice of compliance uh, was, I guess, written on August 11th, 2021. It wasn't signed by Lilani Hines until September 16th, 2021. Now, between August 11th and September 16th, I attended four city council meetings and spoke on that subject, and I was never informed that Rancho San Luis Rey was in compliance. As a matter of fact, on August 18th, there were 25 homeowners here from Rancho San Luis Rey Mobile Home Park and, and here and also on, by Zoom, and no one was ever told that the park was in compliance. Um, we were told the information can be found on the City of Oceanside website. That's what um, Lilani said. And our, my problem is I received, I, I finally received something in the mail. I'm the, the park representative. I received it in the mail, the notice of compliance, October 1. Now, they expect me to disseminate that information. I'm not going to do that. I don't believe I should do that. I think it should be done by star management. Star management doesn't think they, that we, that they don't think they did anything wrong. They think they passed the inspection as of July 1, at, like Shelley just said. Um, I do want to read what, what Lilani Hines uh, sent to me yesterday. Uh, she said, to date, Housing and Neighborhood Services has not received a response from the park. Our city attorney's office is reaching out to the park owner representative to work on a collaborative effort to provide such notice to park res residents. My problem is the people in our park do not know, they, 
most of them don't know they've passed, that, that the park has passed because nobody's let, nobody's let them know. And even if they got the, the, this notice of compliance that was made by the city of Oceanside, um, it doesn't say when they should start paying or how much they should start paying. Um, I want to thank everyone for their attention. And uh, the only other thing I have to say is I'm really, really saddened that you don't aren't using Zoom any longer. I think it, that there's people in the, you know all over Oceanside that would listen to Zoom meetings and they're they're una unable to now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and Ms. Beal, Ms. Parker, if you, uh, I've asked a city attorney to speak with you, um, if you could um, out, outside um, for, what, for his update, okay? Um, we're gonna go ahead and take a five minute break till six o'clock at this time. Um, so for our next six, um, time certain item, thank you. We're gonna go ahead and um, resume here with um, our one public hearing item which is time certain, 6, 6 p.m. It is item 13, adoption of a resolution approving a tentative parcel map development plan and regular coastal permit to allow the demolition of an existing residence in order to allow for the construction of a three-story, two-unit condominium complex located at 212 South Pacific Street. And it's actually called 212 South Pacific Street Condominiums. Uh, very creative. Um, and the applicant is Shiv Talwar. Is he here? Uh, Honorable Mayor Sanchez, I don't believe we have anybody okay. in attendance from their party. They haven't okay. addressed me yet, so. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Do we, do we have the party here now? No? Shiv? He's here. Okay. Here now. We have the party present. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up this public hearing and request uh, disclosures from commissioners and constituent contacts and correspondence. Staff only. Uh, staff only? Staff. None. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. City Clerk. Do we have any uh, uh, correspondence? Uh, we have not received correspondence on this item. Um, or and or petitions. We received no petitions on this okay, item. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go ahead and begin the testimony with uh, Mr. Gre uh, Richard Greenbauer, Principal Planner. Thank Mr. You, Honorable Greenbauer. Mayor Sanchez, good evening. Deputy Mayor Kime, members of the City Council, Richard Greenbauer with the Planning Division here to uh, present uh, a continuation of our redevelopment of our surrounding downtown and beachfront areas uh, that's been quite prevalent the last few years. And uh, what we have in front of you today is a uh, tentative parcel map development plan and coastal permit which is in the appeal jurisdiction to allow the demolition of an existing uh, beach cottage and the development of a duplex on the site. As you can uh, see with the existing photos, it is a very small cottage that exists on site, uh, surrounded by uh, two very large uh, single family residents adjacent to the north and to the south of the 212 site. The proposal would allow for a three story, two unit condominium project, no rooftop decks, all uh, patios would be westerly facing and would allow the uh, views to be obtained in that manner rather than rooftop decks. The location is in the downtown area, uh, subdistrict 5A, which is medium density residential. The actual development comes in under the minimum density for the site at 15 DUs per acre and is consistent with the pattern of redevelopment that is currently occurring. And as you can see, it is just slightly northeast or southeast of the Tyson Street Park and beach access. Development of the site will not impede or uh, modify any of the coastal access that currently exists to date. I won't go through the entire development standards table, but as you can see, the uh, project meets all development standards, uh, keeping it within 27 feet and three stories, which is the max, and no rooftop decks. I just wanted to clarify that because there was some misinformation from some surrounding residents, but once we clarified that, it seemed to quell the uh, concerns. Uh, the overall building is a, a, a modern design, which is consistent, again, with what's been brought forward. And it'll be a mas uh, basically stucco finish, but they'll simulate uh, wood siding and portions of it to break it up and give nice visual articulation to the structure and allow for the uh, sea influence not to destroy it as fast as regular wood. We did have the applicant provide a massing study showing how it would be compatible with the surrounding area and the massing along Pacific Street and uh, massing 
to the uh, south as well as to the north, east, and west. You can see immediately to the east, there is a parking area that is undeveloped, so there will be no uh, impacts to any visual. And the parcels to the east actually have a higher limitation on height, so they'll still be able to take advantage of the views uh, for redevelopment in the future. With that, staff's made the determination that it is consistent with the general plan as far as density in the downtown subdistrict A, height, parking, landscaping, and uh, consistent with policy A of the general plan for architectural form treatments to bring forward a design that will enhance the neighborhood. And with that, staff's recommendation is that the city council move to approve the project by adopting the attached resolution. And I make myself available for any comments, questions, and we do have the applicant's representatives in-house. Thank you. Uh, does the applicant wish to speak at all? Would you like to? Would you like to present or would you like to defer until questions? Uh, you can speak now or if there's any. Would you like to present anything or would you like to just uh, be available for questions? Uh, you, you could also answer any questions that are brought up. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, you, this is a time for the public to, uh, to make comments on this item. You do not have to have requested uh, to speak previously. You can stand up at this time and um, come to the podium, give your name and uh, begin. I see no one rising. I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. I'm at this time and um, having no questions, I, am, I, am, I uh, assume you have no other comments to make. Mr. Greenbauer. I have nothing else to provide. Okay. Thank you. So uh, bring back to the council, uh, Deputy Mayor Kime. I'd just like to move approval of staff's recommendation. And Councilmember Weiss. I was gonna second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Just wanna say thank you so much for not having a rooftop deck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, please vote. Nice project. Thank you. Motion approved, 5 -0. Thank you. Okay, I see that um, we're gonna go back to item number 14, which is um, advanced re written request to speak, uh, because I see uh, Ms. Kathy Nichol has come. Dia de los Muertos, coming up. As well as Halloween, right? Okay, cool. Um, council members, mayor, everybody watching, my name is uh, Kathy Nichol and I'm with an organization called Friends of Oceanside Dia de los Muertos. I'm here to talk about the event that is happening this Sunday in downtown. It is our 20th anniversary. We have a lot of different components to the event. Um, so I want to bring up some of those. Uh, our mayor and several other constituents will be coming to open up the festival. I'm so excited. It I'm is sorry. exciting. I'm just so excited. Bring it, first time in how many years that it's um, back two, downtown? 2008 was our last year here. Um, and then I moved it in 2009 and helped forever. And now we're back. So, um, and it's good because with the amount of attendees, um, I was kind of worried about the missions property. So it, I think it's good. There's that we're construction back there too right now. So. Yeah, yeah. So they they're yeah. doing a lot of, of great stuff yes. at the mission. So uh, great co collaboration though for for ten years. Yeah. Yes. Um, we do have a website, Friends of Oceanside, Um We do want to try to promote utilizing public transportation. One of our partners is North County Transit District. So if you go to our website and attend the attend page. It'll tell you exactly how to get here, where parking is available, and all of our public transportation availability. 
Um, the event starts at 10 a.m. We're going to uh, kick off a lot of different things at the stage, but we are selling um, flowers that day. Uh, all the flowers are have been provided actually for 20 years by Milano Flower Company to do our altars and provide altars to the community and then benefit um, the festival to continue. Uh, so we will have that. We have a car show that is put on by a local car club, Poor Sampre Car Club. Uh, right now we have about 40 to 50 cars coming in, uh, but you never know. Today is Wednesday, so it could grow. Uh, we did start a new thing um, that we're going to have this year. We started a bike area. So for those individuals who want to come and bring their bikes down to the festival, um, we're just asking that you try to remember to bring a non-perishable food item for our food drive next month. Uh, there's no cost. And then uh, that is all on the east side of Coast Highway. And then on the west side of Coast Highway uh, will be our main stage area. And we have our Danza Diablos, the Rubio, several ballet folkloricos, and ending with a mariachi group. Uh, again, our 20-year sponsor, Radio Latina, will be coming in and doing announcements and giveaways and photo opportunities. So at the event, we actually have uh, four, I'm sorry, five different activity areas. Uh, North County Lifeline will be doing um, an art activity up by Oceanside Museum of Art. Studio Ace will be doing a mask activity um, in, on the west side, along with Adelanto Bookmobile will be there. The Avid group will come down, and um, you can make your own Sempasuche flower. And then, goodness, I'm forgetting stuff. But there's going to be great food. It's in the downtown. Um, it's outside. We just want everybody to be safe. Have fun, family friendly during the day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. this Sunday. So that's the first event. Hold on. She does get five minutes. So, yeah. And then next, a week from tomorrow, we have the uh, annual. Haunted Sunset Market. Uh, that's the 28th of October. Um, we do it every year. So it's trick or treat, family friendly again at the market in the downtown. We hope that you'll come down. We do not do a costume contest. It's too hard. <laughs> we do a costume parade at six. Very short parade. You just all meet at six. Cat in the Hat leads the parade every year. And I follow up and I'm the hippie. So um, that will be at 6 p.m. And then 8 o'clock, we have a blood-curdling scream and evil laugh contest. Our vendors are going to decorate and, and be in dress for that particular market. So we do hope that you'll come down. That website is sunsetmarket.com, put on by MainStreetOceanside.com, your downtown business association. So I'm wrapping it up as fast as I could. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you Thank all Thank you down so there. much, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now um, down to uh, mayor's and her council uh, member comments. Um, any comments by colleagues here? I see no light. Okay, this is probably the fastest meeting we've had. Meeting adjourned until Wednesday, November 3rd, 3.30 p.m. for our closed session. Thank you. <laughs>